Hi, I'm Shaya Nirani, therapeutic gastroenterologist at Virginia Mason Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. Dr. Kozarek and I will briefly discuss our paper titled Resolving External Pancreatic Fistulas in Patients with Disconnected Pancreatic Duct Syndrome Using Rendezvous Techniques to Avoid Surgery. So Cheyenne, how did the idea for this paper come about? It came from managing a very difficult problem of external pancreatic fistulas that develop in the setting of a disconnected duct syndrome, where the orphaned or disconnected tail is still secreting pancreatic juice. I would like to start by acknowledging that this was not me or my GI colleagues alone that thought up this plan, but a multidisciplinary approach between us, our surgeons, and interventional radiology. We know how common it is to develop a disconnected duct syndrome in the setting of severe acute pancreatitis and Waldorf necrosis. Any manipulation of Waldorf necrosis that does not involve a transenteric route puts patients at risk for a high output fistula when all fluid collections are resolved. Medical management has limited efficacy. Interventional radiology injection of cyanoacrylate can cause pancreatitis and does nothing to internalize the pancreatic juice. This leaves patients with two options, long-term inconvenient percutaneous drain or a distal pancreatectomy, which has a high morbidity and a significant mortality in the setting. The first time this idea was conceived was in October of 2002 in a patient who developed post-ERCP severe acute pancreatitis. He was managed with percutaneous drain until all fluid collections resolved. But this left him with a high output fistula initially producing 400 cc's a day, which decreased over 19 months to 50 cc's a day after medical and interventional radiology manipulations. He was deemed too poor a candidate for a distal pancreatectomy, and so the surgeons, Dr. Kozarek, yourself, and interventional radiology consulted. Now, just as a cisgastrostomy for pseudocysts in the setting of a disconnected duct syndrome, can provide adequate long-term drainage for the disconnected tail, the thought was to similarly try and redirect the pancreatic juice enterally by performing a transgastric puncture with a tips needle and then passing a wire to the endoscopist, thus rendezvousing in the stomach. This is our most commonly used technique of an outside-in puncture. This seems to be a very select group of patients. Can you explain how you came to select this group and why you only had 15 patients over a decade. We wanted to select the most difficult group of patients to manage with this problem. That is, complete resolution of pancreatic fluid collections, disconnected duct syndrome with a viable tail producing the persistent high output fistula. All patients had to have failed medical treatment and had to be deemed poor surgical candidates. We also excluded patients with any residual fluid collections, which we will target with the US and thus internalize the fluid collection even prior to a persistent fistula developing. This does not require a rendezvous with IR. Furthermore, over the last six years, we have performed dual modality drainage for Waldorf necrosis, which has essentially eliminated fistulas in our group of patients. We've published three papers on the management of Waldorf necrosis and dual modality drainage, and our unpublished data currently stands at 90 patients, about half with a disconnected duct, and we've had zero external pancreatic fistulas. Okay, Cheyenne, why don't you just use EUS to place transgastric pigtail stents into the tracts? So we tried this in two patients. We even injected saline to try and recreate a space. With EUS, the fistula tract and drain are easy to identify, access, and also to place a wire into. The challenge is to get enough of the wire to coil in the fistula to provide the purchase needed to dilate this fibrotic tract to allow us to place two stents to the site of pancreatic disruption, which can be up to three centimeters away from the lumen sometimes. So we needed IR to anchor the wire at the other end to allow easy dilation and accurate stent placement. So turn it around the other way. Why use EUS at all. Why not just use uh, IR puncture of the stomach to the tract? So a careful review of the CT scan is performed on every patient to avoid any intervening vessels prior to proceeding. When we were about to embark on our eighth patient, even our bravest interventional radiologist was concerned about the size and number of varices in his potential path to this outside-in puncture. 
And since we use EUS to avoid vessels during a cis gastrostomy, I decided to perform an EUS puncture of the fistula. But as I mentioned previously, I was unable to dilate the tract. So I had the interventional radiologist join me, capture the wire using a snare under fluoroscopic guidance. And this is the video I've shown in the manuscript. The third technique of reconnecting the ducts was fortuitous. Most patients with disconnected duct syndrome have a complete cutoff of the pancreatic duct, usually in the head of the genu. But in two of our 15 patients, there was a small communication still present to the percutaneous drain at ERCP, but we were unable to demonstrate the disconnected tail. The radiologist was able to manipulate a wire through the fistula downstream through the pancreatic duct and have it emerge transpapillary. And we were able to rendezvous in the fistula and demonstrate the upstream disconnected duct on pancreatogram and place two transpapillary stents across a one centimeter disruption. So finally, is the plan to leave the stents forever? Uh, at what point do you pull these out? Yes, as of now, the intention is to leave the stents in place. We are following these patients every six months to yearly with periodic imaging. Our first patient still has a stents in for almost 10 years. There is experience at other institutions as well about the long-term safety of transenteric stents. As of now, the data suggests it is more important to prevent a recurrent fluid collection, which is at higher risk of symptoms and infection than the concern that these indwelling foreign bodies will increase the risk of infections. That being said, secret and MRCP may help us answer removability of these stents in the future, and that is something we're hoping to study prospectively. Thank you.